you guys John here. I have a comparison video for you of the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander and of course the new 2023 Toyota Sequoia. I'm gonna show you some bits on the outside, go on to the inside of interior space and cargo space. Let's get into it. So walking around the outside real quick of the Grand Highlander. This is Toyota's new three row SUV. You can get it as a seven seater or an eight seater. Three engine options with this one. We have a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder. You have Toyota's 2.5 liter hybrid system, which will give you close to 34 miles per gallon uh, that's at least the manufacturers combined, which is pretty good for this. And then you have a hybrid max system on it, which is a 2.4 liter turbo, 362 horsepower, 400 foot pounds of torque. So all four cylinders on this one. So side profile looking at it. Kind of like a bigger version of a RAV4. And then we will look at the back of it real quick. This is the hybrid max. So we're gonna have dual exit exhaust. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the inside. Tons of soft touch right here. This is the platinum model. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out for you guys. Power seats, we have leather, ultra suede in the center. This is what our steering wheel area and center stack looks like. We'll go ahead and climb on in to the inside of it. Full digital gauge cluster in this one. This is a standard 12.3 inch screen on every single Grand Highlander. Tons of cup holder space. They show that you were able to put hydro flasks and everything in here. Wireless charger, our little shift knob right here from the Prius and also the Toyota Crown. Lots of storage though. You're gonna notice this compared to the Sequoia when I show you guys. This has a ton more storage. We have USBs right up there. Storage in the door cards too and also in the center console. Big center console that slides up. You can put, you can fit iPads, everything in here too. You can fit up to a 13 inch tablet. All your gauge modes right here. This will have kind of like a torque vectoring system, but you have mud and sand, rock and dirt, your eco sport mode setting all on this toggle snow. And then up top, we do have a panoramic moonroof on this one. But one of the things that you'll realize with the Grand Highlander, if you are shopping this compared to the Sequoia, you are gonna sit down a little bit lower because this is a unibody design, but you'll sit lower on it, more car-like essentially. And it's not super, super wide, but I am sitting in here comfortably. I have a pretty decent driving position actually with my feet, so I'm gonna leave the seats here when I go into the back. And then reaching over to the passenger side, if I reach my arm all the way across, we're about to the middle of the passenger seat right here. Let's go into the back seats now. Going on into the back seats, we have some shades back here in this one, which is pretty nice. You have captain's chairs, but you can slide these seats back. So the center seat slide, so it will give you a good amount of space right there for the driver's seat. Also too, here in the back, we got phone chargers on this side, phone charger on that side. You have a big old outlet down there. You have three zone climate control, heated and ventilated seats here in the rear of the Platinum. And then panoramic moonroof, HVAC up in the ceiling, and you have cup holders right here in the center. All right, so coming on to sit on the inside, again, I am right behind me as I had that as my driver's seat. Whole kind of hands length ahead, but if you need more room in the back, slide it forward, give them more room, slide it back. We can also recline the seat too, which is pretty nice. Okay, so to get into the back, we're just gonna lift up right here. Seat folds forward a little bit and then you're able to access the rear. All right, so with the seat forward a little bit, you can see a little step right here. And then we have a kind of grab handle right here to allow ourselves to get into the back of the Grand Highlander. All right, so getting in, putting the seat back. I have a lot of room back here. So I'm five foot 11, just for reference. Headspace, I have a good amount of headspace, maybe four-ish inches, maybe that is. But the cool thing is that you can recline this back seat too. Now I got a crap ton of headspace back here. Also with this center seat too, you can lock it at certain spots. So depending on where that seat occupant is, like this is all the way back, and I still am not touching my legs right here to the center seat. So there's a lot of space in the back of the Grand Highlander, good amount of headspace, good amount of uh, adult knee space and stuff too. Now let's check out the cargo area. All right, so we'll show you guys the storage area now. This is uh, the big difference between the Grand Highlander and Sequoia. 
So you can kind of see a difference. This is where the seat would be normally, and then we have this side reclined back. Toyota says seven carry-on items. You know, in their videos they showed a Yeti cooler and then a beach bag and stuff, but seven carry-on items back here. Cool thing is that when you fold these all the way down, it's a flat floor, which the Sequoia, you'll see, does not have. And then if you fold the second seats down, this thing has 97.5 cubic feet of cargo space. So that's more than the Sequoia, more than the Forerunner too, and you guys know how big the Forerunner is. So a lot of space in here. And then we also have tiny little storage right down here too. Then I'll just show you guys a closer look of this whole load space back here. So it's pretty flat. I mean, it, it's kind of like raked up just a little bit, but completely flat. And those center seats will also fold flat too. So a lot of space back here, even from the loading floor up to the top too, you have a good amount of space. What do you guys think about this? Now that we got a good idea of the Grand Highlander, let's go check out the Sequoia. So for the example of the Sequoia, we will look at the top of the line for it. So this would be the capstone. So the Platinum over there on the Grand Highlander, that, that was the top of the line for that vehicle. So we're gonna look at the top of the line for the Sequoia. Now, this pricing on this one is about 80,000. We don't know the pricing yet of the Grand Highlander. So obviously that will come into play too, but we'll start with the powertrain on this. Very simple for the Sequoia. 3.4 liter twin turbocharged V6. It's a hybrid. Uh, it's a hybrid powertrain as well, and they call it the I Force Max. 437 horsepower, 583 foot pounds of torque. We'll go ahead and take a walk around this one. So instead of looking like another vehicle in Toyota's lineup, it kind of looks a little bit like the Tundra because these both share that same platform, but definitely not like the Rav4. But it does still have some Toyota cues to it. The rear end of both of them, the Grand Highlander and the Sequoia kind of look a little bit similar in the sense of the lights back here, but I do like how the Grand Highlander says its name up top here. It says Grand Highlander across, whereas the Sequoia says it down at the bottom. We'll go ahead and look at the side profile of the vehicles. Now, we don't know measurements yet exactly of the Grand Highlander, but I was told that it was about two inches higher, two inches wider, six inches, I believe, longer than a normal Highlander was. So not quite a full-size vehicle like the Sequoia is, but somehow it still has more room on the inside. So that was a quick look at the outside of the Sequoia. This one does have tow mirrors. It does come with normal mirrors. Don't worry about that. But we'll get inside the capstone. Tons of soft touch throughout the capstone as well. So just like the Grand Highlander, we have tons of materials, tons of soft touch materials. Soft touch up here on the dash. We have wood grain in it too. Semi aniline leather. Zoom out a little bit for you guys is what they call this leather, super plush. Whereas the Grand Highlander was a 10-way adjustable, this one here is a, what would that be, 12-way adjustable because of this adjustability right here. Taking a look at the dashboard, you have a large 12.3-inch screen right here, much bigger 14-inch screen here. Both, both the Grand Highlander and the Sequoia do have Toyota's new infotainment screen with wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. But one thing you will notice is how much less storage space the Sequoia has. So we have two tinier cup holders right here. We have a little bit of space up there for our cell phones, a wireless charger, but no storage here on the dash, barely any storage in the doors compared to it. And then even the center console too, we have kind of like a trick center console with this one, various, you know, ways to open it up and then it is pretty cavernous compared to the Grand Highlander but you can't like open this up all the way and keep something in it you really got to open it up this way we do have some cup holders in here but for the most part guys not a lot of storage options in the Sequoia now as I'm sitting in this compared to the Grand Highlander though definitely feel like I'm sitting up a lot higher than it obviously this is a body on frame vehicle so more of a truck platform than a more of a car platform like the Grand Highlander is, but tons of space in here. And if I reach over to the passenger seat, just how I did in the Grand Highlander, I am barely, like barely into uh, the seat. Like maybe just right here, whereas in, the, whereas in the Grand Highlander, I was like more in the middle. So Sequoia is definitely a bit wider of a vehicle, bit taller of a vehicle. I still have probably the same amount of headspace. Drivability feels good. Uh, let me scoot up just a little bit more to where I would be at as a driving position. So now, good driving position. Let's go and show you guys the back seats. Spoiler alert, the Grand Highlander 
cells in the back compared to this. Let's go check it out. Coming on into the back of the Sequoia, we also have our shades back here. But what is nice, we do have some illumination, soft touch materials all throughout on the side. This one as well in the top of the line trim has captain's chairs in the back. We have HVAC up on the roof, panoramic moonroof as well. Coming down, it is also a three zone climate control, heated and ventilated seats in the back. We also have some USB-Cs back here too, and an inverter for the rear occupants. So sitting in the back of the Sequoia, very spacious in the second row. The second row of the Sequoia is very, very comfortable. Loads of space compared to the Grand Highlander from me to my driving position here. The recliner is kind of weird that it's back here as opposed to the Grand Highlander where it's a little bit closer to your hands, but we can recline this seat back. Tons of space to relax in the back of the Sequoia. Go ahead and bring that for go ahead and bring that forward a little bit but this seat does not slide so what we have is what we have right here in the center row of the sequoia now in order to get to the back seats it's kind of the same process but the seat literally like folds and flies forward instead of sliding and then you are able to enter the back of the sequoia so now as you'll see trying to get back here there is not that much space even for my feet too Really not that much space. Now I have a little tab right here. I can move this seat a little bit to try to give myself more space, but there is no space in the back compared to the Grand Highlander until you grab this little lever right here. And now we can move the rear seats back. So that is nice. So now when I sit here, I am comfortable, but my head is starting to touch the roof. My head is literally touching the roof right now as I sit back here. I have a good amount of space, but like for my knees and stuff, but I am sitting up very high right now. Now the cool thing as you'll see though, is that the Sequoia does have power reclining rear seats. So if I go back a little bit further, I can sit back pretty far, but my head is still super close. So my head is still super close to the back, but I am able to bring it up. So I mean, to me, the Grand Highlander is more for adults in the back, like weirdly, but the Sequoia, I don't know, man. It just depends on what you're really using the vehicle for. But the rear seat of the Sequoia, until they make like a Grand Sequoia or like a Suburban Fighter Sequoia, it, it's gonna be tough because this rear seat is nowhere near as good personally as the Grand Highlanders is. So let's go ahead and check out the cargo space that we're working with. Okay, so opening up the rear cargo hatch of the Sequoia, same as, pretty much the same as the Grand Highlander, power lift gate, which is nice. Okay, so in the back here of the Sequoia, we actually have automatic rear seats, which is nice on this capstone. Touch the button, the headrest moves forward, the seat will start to fold flat, okay? We will do the left seat too, to show you guys that. Left seat is also folding down now, headrest goes down. So now the back is cool because you get to slide it back and forth like this to give yourself some more cargo space. But you will notice compared to the Grand Highlander that it is not completely flat. And the cubic feet that you have of the Sequoia is actually a bit smaller than it is in the Grand Highlander. I think it's close to like 12 cubic feet smaller. But what Toyota did to give you a little bit flatter of a space is this shelf system here. So you gotta slide the seats now back towards us a little bit. Bring that back, flip the shelf open. So now you have a flat surface and the shelf can hold 200 pounds, but you have a flat surface now in the back of the Sequoia, but you really have to lift stuff up pretty high to get it up here. So it may not be the most ideal for a lot of people. All right, so we will take a look at that and what I'm talking about. So the shelf system is kind of cool because you can separate some things down here at the bottom. And then we do have a fold flat ish floor right and you do have a decent amount of space too from that shelf to the top but for a lot of people this may be inconvenient so you definitely lose rear seating space i mean granted the sequoia is a bit wider than the grand highlander which is nice but this whole rear end situation it may be better for you if you want the grand highlander but the difference is is if you need this thing to tow because the sequoia can tow pretty dang close to 10,000 pounds, almost double what the Highlander, what the Grand Highlander can tow. So it's just whatever you need for your family, uh, for whatever you guys are doing. So that's the back of the Sequoia, guys. What do you think about that compared to the Grand Highlander? So guys, that's it. Would you pick the Sequoia or the Grand Highlander? Way more information coming later as we have more time with both vehicles. But I want to be one of the first to give you guys a good side-by-side -side comparison of the Sequoia and the Grand Highlander because a lot of people may be starting to cross shop these two three-row SUVs by Toyota now. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.